We are now getting to learn something about a milk measurement and sampling systems for milk collection trunks. And I'm very happy to present the speaker to you. He works for Bartek Benke GmbH. There he's the manager division food. A very warm welcome to Lutz Reiprich. Herzlich willkommen. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, first of all, again, thank you for the moderation. Um, thank you for being here. The topic that I would like to speak to you today concerns indeed um, quantity and quality. And uh, what we at Bartek do is we are a company that builds milk measurement and sampling systems for milk collection trucks. In other words, the trucks that actually go to the farm, pick up the milk, go to the dairy and deliver it at that place. Okay, we are located in southern Germany, in Bavaria. Um, the second picture is not our office, uh, it's Castle Neuschwanstein. <laughs> We'd like to be there, but unfortunately we can't. Um, we have about 149 employees and generate about 30 million euros in revenues per year. Um, the unusual thing about Bartek is that we have 20 full-time engineers who do basically nothing but concern themselves with measurement, uh, measurement in the food sector, specifically in the milk. And our concentration is definitely global. We have uh, customers really spanning the globe. This is just an example, uh, Ala and Fonterra, but there are many customers between Denmark and um, New Zealand that have trusted us with their truck fleet. Um, for the last seven years, we've been voted as one of Germany's 100 most innovative companies. Um, and that has um, a few basic cornerstones, but I think the main one is that um, we, uh, we practice at Bartek a thing called, we, we are allowed to think around corners. In other words, we always say, we think it, we say it, and we do it. Okay, so what is the big picture? Um, you have a farm. As it may look different in different countries, but this is one from Bavaria. You got a truck that picks up the milk. And what does he do? He takes it to the dairy. So, very simplistic approach. Um, what we do is, again, as I mentioned earlier, we measure two things. We measure the quantity and the quality of the product leaving the farm and going to the dairy. So, what do we do specifically? We have a saying at Bartek, um, we do one thing and one thing only, and that is that we develop milk measurement systems. We do not build the entire truck, so globally we always associate ourselves with somebody that actually puts the wheels underneath the, uh, the Tiger system. So again, our way is to the dairy. So the key message at this point is that, again, we measure the quantity and the quality, and if you were to ask me what is the global KPI, that uh, most logistics manager work with worldwide, it is definitely the collection cost. In other words, to keeping the collection cost as low as possible. Okay, and um, our customers come to us basically with three main wishes. It always concerns measurement, it concerns the sampling of the milk, I'll get to that in a minute. And lastly, it concerns the data transfer. In other words, the milk collection truck actually talking to the dairy so that the dairy knows what's coming before the truck has even arrived there. Just perhaps one more explanation of how we do it. Again, we develop systems that need wheels. So in the beginning, you have a milk collection truck. You have a Bartek system underneath of it. The next step is we usually cooperate with superstructure builders. In other words, we sell the system to a superstructure integrator who then approaches a dairy processor um, or a trucking company. And lastly, our final customers are companies such as these. So our more immediate customers are always sort of intermediaries. In other words, the guys that build the trucks. We are uh, indeed a global company. So there are representations from Bartek Benke in most countries around the world. Okay. so. Um, uh, the first system I'd like to introduce to you, again, milk collection and sampling system. It's called the Tiger. Uh, it's a name that we basically thought of uh, and, and gave it to the system. And what it really does is, it does three things. 
It connects the farmer, the trucking company, and the dairy. The dairies came up to us and they said, listen, if you develop this system for us, we want you guys to preserve the quality. In other words, we want you to develop a system that is fast, but it shouldn't be so fast that it destroys the fatty chains, for instance, in the milk. So you need to treat the milk gently. Yes, it can be quick, but mostly it should be gentle. The trucking companies, completely different set of requirements. They, like, they said, we'd like to have a system that is very fast. We'd like to have a system that is very light because weight for us means diesel. So in other words, the lighter the system, the less weight under the truck, the more milk in the truck. And lastly, the farmer, and that is one of our biggest responsibilities because we, we as a company represent the daily work that the farmer has done. In other words, when we take the milk from the farm and we measure this milk and when we take it to the dairy, it is sort of the economic representation of what that farmer has done that day. So again, quality preservation in the medium is important, efficiency in procurement and transport. I'm not sure how it is uh, actually globally, I can only speak for Central Europe, but the three main requirements are again, the system should be very exact, it should be light and it should be fast. Um, perhaps two qualifications. Um, the system is registered to 2,000 liters per minute, um, MID certified. For some countries, that is a little bit too fast. We've heard from Turkey, for instance, that they would prefer to only have 500 liters per minute, but um, to max it out, we're actually talking 2,000 per minute. The system weighs about 200 kilograms. Uh, the measurement portion of it, when we get to the sampling aspect in a minute, it's a little dependent on how um, elaborate the sampling itself is going to be set up because it will have an, um, um, an effect on the weight. Um, it's relatively small, Euro 6 conform. And interestingly enough, um, you can practice, this, the system can be hooked up via satellite. So when something does go wrong with the system, um, the, the dairy or the, the company that's actually supervising the specific truck will sometimes, actually most of the time, know if there's anything going on with the truck ahead of the time if something does go wrong. The system is self-adapting. Um, some of you know that uh, not all the time do you have uh, a, a very large hosing at the, at the farm. So even if there's a hose or if there's some type of system that's, that's less than an inch, the system automatically adjusts itself to it. Um, perhaps just one aspect uh, to this graph. When our customers approached us to develop this system, the trucking companies indeed said, listen Bartek, these two cost blocks, fuel and personnel, represent together about 62% of our costs. So again, make it light and make it fast. I always like to say that if I were to only show you one slide out of this whole presentation, it would be this one. Because there's something at Bartek that we do that uh, globally nobody else does. When you draw in milk from the farm, you automatically also have ingressed air. Now there are certain companies that try to alleviate this air by using a, um, an air separation system. So essentially pulling in the milk and trying to separate the air out of the milk to get an accurate measurement. What we at Bartek do is we go completely a different way. In other words, we use something called bubble sensor technology. And what that means is that when the milk is being drawn in, you basically have two phases. You have a, a foam phase and a liquid phase. Now an air separation system may be able to get some of the foam out of it before the milk is being measured, but it's certainly very difficult to get the immersed air particles within the milk out of the milk, figuratively speaking. So we do this totally differently. In other words, we measure the complete milk intake and are actually able, via two bubble sensors that are located in our system, to literally extract the air component out of the milk MID certified. So that at the end of the milk intake process, you have a correction factor for the air that was contained within it. This is just a picture of a farm valve and if you, I'm not sure if you can see it from, from the back, but it's quite
quite dirty around the side. So what happens is the seal at that, uh, in that position does not, is, is not very tight. So when you're starting to pull in milk at 1,500, 2,000 liters per minute, you can, if, if you were to use an acrylic pipe, for instance, you can see how the air is pulled in like a string of pearls. So you will always, at a, in a farm situation, you will always have non-perfect scenarios. So the moment you have an air ingress like this, and the moment you would use an air separation system, you will get non-exact measurement. Perhaps one last aspect to this. Um, there are some companies that build these measurement systems um, that have integrated that have integrated one bubble sensor. Bartek has worked on this system, I would say, for about seven years. In the beginning, we started with one of these bubble sensors as well. However, at that point, we realized that by using only one bubble sensor, we could detect that there is air. But only after we used the second one did we realize we can also measure the air. There's a dairy company in Europe that took about 12.5 billion liters of milk uh, in, in 2017. Now, if you take a farm gate price of about 30 cents per liter, they paid out about 3.75 billion euros to the farmers in milk, pr uh, in, in, uh, in milk payments. Now, when you use the Bartek system and this dual bubble sensor setup, the system is about 0.5% more accurate than if you use an air separation system. In other words, when the air separator frantically tries to take out the air before it's being measured, and that would translate into about 3.7 million euros in savings that they would have paid for air and they didn't. So just to give you a little bit more of an economic viewpoint of the situation. Okay. Um, we went, uh, as a matter of fact, it was Turkey. We went into, uh, into Turkey and spoke to Turkish trucking companies and to Turkish dairies. And we explained to them that we could draw in milk 2,000 liters per minute. And they said to us, this is terrible. I said, when our truck drivers come to a Turkish farm, they get a cup of coffee, they get a piece of cake from the, Tur from the Turkish farmer's wife, and they talk. So they said, please, nothing more than 500 liters per minute. So what happened was, we, f you know, we were more German than we feared to be, so we had to come back to Bavaria and we had to explain to our engineers, listen guys, we know you can build a Porsche, but now you've got to build something else. And so they asked us, what well, do you want something even faster? And we said, no, we want something that's substantially slower. So we needed to find a cat that wasn't a tiger, so we took the lynx and we basically developed a system for the rest of the world. In other words, a system for emerging markets where you don't need bubble sensors, where the roads aren't uh, as they are in Central Europe. Um, we've been quite successful in Brazil. And some of you that may have been to Brazil, you know that there are not holes in the roads, they're bathtubs. So it tends to be very hectic. And the Tiger system just wasn't the way to go. So we came up with a system that is a little bit slower, it's an impeller system. This system does indeed use an air separation device. Pumping speed a little bit below 500 liters per minute. Very simple to use, very rugged. And uh, we have 40 units installed, which we're very proud of. And uh, uh, we are in 10.2. Uh, I'll say it in a minute at the end, but you can come have a look at the system. It, it's, it's quite simple. It's actually surprisingly simple. It does have a sampling device to it, but um, it's not quite as elaborate as, um, here's a schematic, it isn't quite as elaborate as, uh, as the Tiger system. Okay, this is just one more slide on what I've just spoken about. This is a, a Brazilian dairy that's using the system. And let me move on. Um, two things that both the Tiger and the Lynx system have in common. The first thing is, uh, as I spoke of earlier, we have sampling. So we do two things. Again, we measure quantity and quality. This would be the quality aspect. So when the milk is being taken from the farmer, we're not only pumping it into the truck, but we're also taking a representative sample of the milk as it is being drawn in. Um, 
This is a quad sampler. This is from Fonterra in New Zealand. In other words, their requirement was we would like to have four samples per farmer. Now, we can break this system all the way down and make it completely non uh, make it non electronic. We have a handheld device where the sample bottle can actually be manually filled by the driver and then being taken back into the cabin for cooling. So we can go from four all the way down to one. The bottles can be identified via barcode or RFID technology. One thing, again, for some it's just a word, but it's, it's, a, it's a crucial thing. And uh, that's something that Bartek is, is, is really good at, and that is the representativity of the sample. In other words, we can abs absolutely guarantee you two things. There will be no carryover between the farms due to the way the sampling system is um, set up. And the second thing is the bottle, the, uh, sorry, the milk that's in the bottle is absolutely 100% representative of the milk that was in the farm truck, farm tank of the farmer. Okay, again, we can handle the barcode, we can handle tag, it can be totally automatic, semi-automatic or manual. Here we have a setup with a refrigeration unit with an 18 plus 6 um, bottle drive. Again, up here you see the sampling procedure, the bottles are being fed underneath the needle, the farm is recognized uh, via GPRS and the carousel turns to the correct pharma and the sample is being taken. One quick X course, Bartek not only deals in milk uh, measurement devices, but Bartek is actually a company that's in the um, explosion proof sector of the industry. So we always like to say Bartek tries to protect everything that could explode in the oil and gas business from doing so. So we've taken an idea over from our colleagues in the Petro side of the business and it's called sealed parcel delivery because we found out that all over the world um, people tend to do things with milk that the dairies absolutely do not want. Either they water it down or they steal it or they take it away or whatever. So what the system does is if a truck, if a milk collection truck in Colombia stops anywhere at a geographic point that does not correspond to a farm or to a dairy, an alarm goes off. Now, we can actually lock up the entire truck. We can lock up the cabinet, the manholes. It's all according to what the customer would like to have. But I thought I'd mention this to you because it's, it's quite a unique idea. We know that um, from our experience in aircraft refueling, of course, fuel is a more expensive commodity than milk, but yet, um, there are some companies, there were some Israeli customers, for instance, that are very interested in something like this because um, the potential for terrorism, for somebody putting something into a milk collection trailer that's sitting outside of a village uh, can be substantial. Okay, um, getting toward the end. I'd just like to say something to you, not so much in what we do, but how we do it. Um, Bartek, as I mentioned, is globally active. We have partners nearly all over the world. If you are located in a country where we do not have one, we tend to follow your suggestion for finding a system integrator that has worked either in your dairy industry generally or specifically with your company. Um, you may say to yourself, well, Bartek allows maintenance access to their system. Well, great. Um, let me tell you this, we actually do this. There are some companies that tend to sell you systems and they lock them up. We have a very open architecture. So since we have international partners that we need to deal with, of course, we also need to open the system up. So we will, we will train you and we will lay the system open to you so we, together with you, can customize it to your wishes. Um, adaptation and alignment to dairy data management structure. That is probably, if you were to ask me what are the two main components of the things that we do, and I would have to say to you, yes, it is the hardware and the software installation on the truck itself that goes to the farms and so on. But the second most important thing is the data communication from the truck into the dairy itself. And there I can tell you that 
we have managed to adjust ourselves to every customer that have, we have had so far. Because uh, dairies like Friesland Campina, for instance, they're definitely interested that once a Tiger system enters their fleet, they do not, in their, in their headquarters, they do not want to see a different set of data transferred coming from this, from this Bartek truck as opposed to all the other trucks in their fleet. As I mentioned, you can practice online maintenance with these vehicles. We can either do it ourselves at Bartek or you can do it in your headquarters. And you can, you can monitor the vehicle 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We will train and support. And perhaps one last thing, Bartek is not a fire and forget company. In other words, when we sell products to our customers, we stay with them. In other words, we stay with them beyond the customer validation point. We stay with them as long as it takes for the system to run, for us to train their local persons, for us to train their superstructure or their service partners. Yeah, that's where we are. I don't come from Bavaria, but that's where we come from. And if you want to uh, meet us or talk to us some more, we're in 10.2 C59. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, so of course I've got a question. So the word tiger stands for being fast. What else? Yeah, it, it's, it's fast, light and accurate. Okay, so the yeah. three characteristics. Yeah. That's the elevator. Great, okay. <laughs> and we understood what Lynx stands um, for. For the Lynx, I would say it's, uh, it's rugged. It's, um, I wouldn't say less performance. It, it's, it's rugged and built for emerging nations. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.